Good morning. Good morning. Now we're hot. We are glad that you are here this morning. If you're glad to be here, raise your hand. That's good. I always like to see hands go up because I never was growing up. I never was the kind of guy that when I worshiped, I would raise my hand. And I don't think it matters whether you are or not. But now it's sort of kind of like I can't help it sometimes. And the gravity just sort of kind of goes up. All the other gravity's going down. But the gravity sort of kind of goes up. And uh, I don't know, just holding an open hand sometimes is a, a great way to pray. So we're happy that you're here. Pastor Kirby and his wife Elaine are on vacation this week. Uh, I guess they'll be back. I'm not sure when he'll be back. Anybody know? Anyway, he's not here today, okay? So we're going to have worship without him. We've got some special guests coming this morning, and I've already had the privilege of getting to hear them one time. You guys are in for a real treat. It's real informative. It's going to be a great opportunity for you to learn about a a great cause. I'm going to go through a couple of the announcements right quick. Uh, How many of you guys have picked up a backpack out in the... uh, the, if If your hand's not up, then you need to pick up a backpack, okay? And let's fill it up. Uh, it's Christmas backpacks for, Ala- for Appalachia, and uh, you can pick a girl or a boy, and I guarantee you it's going to be a blessing to somebody no matter who you pick. Uh, there'll be no services tonight, uh, so enjoy Labor Day and all with your family. Uh, no Awanas or anything this evening, no choir practice. Uh, Wednesday nights are, are back in full swing. At 6 o'clock, there is a meal prepared, and I understand that they are going through the books of the Bible this uh, this. Uh, season so um, everybody be sure to come on Wednesday nights the couples retreat still coming up on October the 10th through the 12th Um, I think there may still be some room open but see Steve uh, or see Wanda whenever they're back in and you guys can find out more about that if there's still any openings left Um, let's see grief share is uh, September the 11th through December the 4th and so from what I understand about that, anybody that may be struggling with grief or have, having lost a loved one or anything of that nature, grief comes in all kind of different forms. Here's an opportunity for you to sometimes just getting together with a group with trained people that know about how to handle that, just talking about things. Sometimes people just need to be listened to, and that's what's so important. So there's a good opportunity there. Um, goodness, there are so many things going on. Just a couple of other things while I'm thinking about it. Uh, you know, probably one of the things that I, I take for granted in the bulletin that is is probably the most important thing in this bulletin it's a prayer list so you know if you get a chance take one home with you and and you you may not mention every one of them by name but i believe if you just said god everybody that's on that prayer list i pray that you'll touch them and meet them at their point of need i believe that if god can keep the world in spinning he can do just that do y'all believe that i believe he can uh, sometimes I think we try to make it too hard, too complex. Maybe if we just say, God, I'm not having a real good day. These people are not having a good day. Can you help them and take care of them? I believe God can hear your prayer, and I believe he does. September the 7th, Ashley Barnes is having a baby shower, so there's, that's what's going on there. Uh, so be sure to support her and her family. Uh, we're having a uh, walk for Alzheimer's. I mean, you know, my mom struggles with memory challenges, and uh, Carol Potts' mother, uh, I don't think they're here today, but her, her mom uh, struggled with Alzheimer's before she passed. And uh, there's two walks coming up, one in Gastonia, if you're closer there, on the 7th. That's the team that uh, I've put together that are walking that day. If you want to join us to walk, it would be great. It's a couple of miles or so. Or if you just want to go and donate, there's information there. You can donate to mine or Carol's teams. Any dollar amount you want to to go toward a cure for Alzheimer's will be appreciated. And um, her walk is taking place in Rock Hill on the 12th of October. So now I'm sure I missed something with all that. Did I miss anything, church, that y'all want to announce? No? All right. Well, I'm going to ask Mr. Eddie to come up and give a little introduction to our special guest today. Good morning again. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today uh, is a special. We're, we're observing a special emphasis for one of the most, uh, in my estimation, one of the most important uh, ministries offered through the Southern Baptist Convention, and that is of disaster relief. Uh, Rhonda and I have been involved in this ministry now for a little over a year, and it's become a real labor of love. 
And today we have a special guest who is going to come in and expand a little bit on background as to how the reach of that ministry and how God's using it to, uh, to bring the, and how we, he uses us to take the gospel to people in need and who are hurting as a result of national disasters. And uh, today's observance couldn't be more apropos than, than if you look and if you watch the news and you know where we are as a, the East Coast is in the sights of a fairly large uh, hurricane that could become one that historical in our history and uh, we, we're praying for God's provi provision and mercy and guidance that it, it may at the very worst turn, turn northeast and, and miss us but at this point it's too early to tell but anyway uh, and if you, if you happen to notice the, 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 this gold shirt this shirt is worn by three, uh, two other two or three other members of your church family and who who give their time and efforts to this this ministry and if you have any questions at all after today and you see one of us we can we can fill you in and we're always looking for good uh, dedicated uh, volunteers to to fill the needs we we meet the needs here first of all here in our county our state and then at the national level as you can well imagine uh, so I, I put this ministry out there as an option for those of you who, who feel the feel led by God to, to participate and as a part of this emphasis we we've, we've invited a special guest who is the well he and his wife uh, that's Jack and Fran uh, Mounts if you would stand and so folks can recognize you and know why you're here Jack and Fran are the co-directors of the uh, disaster relief efforts here in York County uh, so they're, they come to us from Union Baptist Church, a sister organization here, in, or sister church in our association. And I've had the opportunity to work with uh, Jack and Fran only for a short period of time. Uh, we've, we've both been in the, in the ministry here in York County uh, for the same amount of time, about a year. But Jack and Fran have a uh, history that goes back into the, uh, in the state of Georgia. And uh, so they're very well equipped and, and been blessed for, for their involvement in this ministry for several years but uh, Jack and Fran and I have, have gone through training and we're preparing for the for the events that are to come and, and we, we today's emphasis we, we want to bring to you that ministry put it before you and uh, Jack's words I'm, I'm sure will be inspirational and we look forward to his involvement and as a note uh, as, as it is tradition here at Bethel when we have special uh, guests to come in and fill our pulpit, we normally like to receive a love offering. So the regular offering will be followed by a special love offering for Jack and, and Fran. But I'm going to take an opportunity, having said that, to let you know that it's desire, it's Jack and Fran's desire that those funds be put to good use here through our church ministry structure. So we will leave that up to the, the Fellowship of Deacons as to how that uh, that offering will be utilized, but it will be, uh, it will, is a way for us to respond to Jack and Fran for their, the, the service that they will provide, and not only in music, these two individuals are very multi-talented, and I think you'll enjoy their, their uh, con contribution to today's service. Thank you, Eddie. Let's go ahead and stand this morning as we begin our worship. We're going to sing Open the Eyes of My Heart. However, how many of you guys wake up sometimes and you feel like it's just, you've just got your eyes closed? Anybody? Wouldn't it be good if God just opened our heart to, and our eyes to see the way He sees things? And I'm going to thank Mr. Adam in advance for filling in for the sound this morning. He's going to get us set up with the words and all. Open the eyes of my heart. All praise this morning. Here we go. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. How many of y'all like to see him this morning? Here we go. I want to see you. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see See you this morning. Oh, I want to see you. To see you 
Worship with me this morning. Here we go. Let's sing it. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. How many of y'all believe he's holy this morning? Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Close your eyes and sing it with me. You know the words. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 God, you are holy. Holy, 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 Lord, you're so holy. Holy, 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 Lord, you're so holy. I want to see you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you on this side. Let's go. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 God, we want to see you. Holy, 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 my God is holy. Holy, 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 God, we want to see you.
All right, if I could go ahead and have all the children come on down for children's time, you could come on up now. If all the children will come on up and join me. All right. Come on up. All right. How are y'all today? Come on up. Good to see everybody. Y'all can come scoot a little closer. It's all right. Really good. Come on up. All right. It's good to see everybody today. How are y'all? Good. Well, it's good to see you today. And today I brought with me a few tools couple different tools. They're actually, they're the same. They just have different tops on them. What are, what are these? Anybody know? Screwdrivers. Good job, Hayden. That's exactly right. They're screwdrivers, okay? So who knows? What do we, do? What do we use a screwdriver for? Unscrew screws or to put screws back in, right? It can do both purposes. It can take things out, help us get things unscrewed if we need to take it apart, or when we're assembling something, we can use it to put it together. And so that's why I brought with me a pair of my scissors from my house because a lot of times when I'm cutting things for my classroom, I get using the scissors and I realize the scissors are kind of loose. And you can see right here, there's a screw that I have to use that can come loose. And so I have to use my screwdriver to tighten it up so that it'll stay in place and I can keep using my scissors the right way. And so today I wanted to talk to you. I want to relate that to, to the Lord. And you know, God wants us to stay right in place also. And God gave us his word. He gave us the Holy Bible to be our word that keeps us, helps us to stay in place. And God doesn't want us to come loose either. He doesn't want us to go on those wayward ways. He wants us to stay close to him and tight with him. And so we want to think about that today, that we want God, we want to stay close to God and we want to stay completely connected to him. And we don't, he doesn't need a screwdriver to keep us in place. He's got the word and his Holy Spirit that keeps us in place. So I want you to think about that when you see screwdrivers and we're tightening up screws and we're keeping them in place, that the Lord wants us also to stay tight with him and to stay closely connected to him. Okay, so think about that as we continue to go through this fall and this school year. So let's go ahead and pray, and then you can get a piece of candy, okay? Dear Lord, I just thank you for today, Father. I thank you for these children. Father, I thank you for just being, Father, the one that wants us to stay closely connected to you and to stay tight with you. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for your precious word. Father, and I pray that you'll bless each of these children this week as they go out and go about their various ways. Father, I pray you'll protect them and keep them safe. In your precious name we pray, amen. I saw a new minister, several deacons, and a pretty choir leader. I think that is awesome. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that in any church as long as I've been going. God bless you. As far as, as the love offering and the backpacks for West Virginia, I, I guarantee you no one here at this church knew that, knew this, but I'm from West Virginia. Uh, we we were back recently, and I've been back several times over the years, but we were back recently, and the poverty is a very stark uh, reminder of of the state of things up there. Buildings that were, or city, county, government buildings, as I was growing up, uh, now have weeds growing through the windows and vines, you know, covered in vines. Homes that had beautiful yards and and happy families living their lives there are now falling down from disrepair. There, there just, there is no income. 
in the southern part of the state uh, and maybe farther north, but uh, those backpacks, will, I promise you, will make a huge impact. So if, if the church would, that's where the love offering needs to go is towards supporting that ministry for the youth. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here today. Father God, we ask that you set us aside, fill us with the Holy Spirit, and may the things we say and do bring you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Go ahead. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I shall for
name Jesus for silver was so on an old rugged cross the great love story was told oh oh, oh what a story I love you was written in blood. Rivers of mercy are flowing between two things hung God's son. Sun's been paid for every man's soul on an old rugged cross. The great love story was told. Jesus loves you. He cried, it is finished. And the world heard the sound marking the beginning as his blood touched the ground. The master plan for living on Mount Calvary in grace. This expression of love brings salvation today. Oh, oh, oh what a story! I love you. Was written in blood. Rivers of mercy are flowing between two thieves on God's side. The ransom been paid for every man's soul on an old rugged cross the great love story was told on an old rugged cross the great love story was told. Thank you. Praise God. Do you feel like God loves you this morning? Amen. As uh, Brother Eddie said, we're... Uh, we're here to bring you the message of disaster relief. It's um, not just our opinion. It's not just something we do. It's spoken of in many different ways throughout the Bible. Uh, Fran and I uh, have many, many years of disaster relief experience. Um, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, broken families loss of loved ones, uh, the day of grief that uh, Jeff was speaking of. We are uh, both uh, grief counselors and uh, critical incident counselors. If there's a need in the church or if you know of need in your family, your loved ones, any anywhere, uh, please take one of those cards that's out there in the foyer. Take one with you and uh, 
don't just let it slide off your dashboard and fall between your seat and your console or get put out in the next burn pile, but keep that thing with you. Uh, when you look at it and you don't have a need, pray for us. <laughs> if you look at it and you got a need, then give us a call. If we can't be there personally, uh, I assure you we have many, many servants of God in, in York County that, that are willing to come and help. Special thank you today for, uh, for the church, for allowing us to be here. Um, for me, it's humbling uh, to stand in a pulpit where God's word is spoken and God's will is done. And, and I do not take it lightly that the church has allowed us to come in here. And thank you for my brother in Christ, Eddie. Uh, they told me, uh, told me not to be in a hurry. We didn't have to be out till 1 o'clock. In the book of Luke, in chapter 10, starting in verse 25, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, They were always trying to catch Jesus up in something, weren't they? Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he, the lawyer, answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he, Jesus, said unto the attorney, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, the attorney, willing to justify himself, we're always trying to do that, aren't we? Justify ourselves. He said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered him, saying, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed from him, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down that certain, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, the man who had beaten, robbed, left for dead, when the priest saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked upon him, the man who had beaten, stripped of his clothing, robbed and half dead. The Levite passed by him on the other side. But a certain Samaritan as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him, bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he had departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host. And he said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou needest spend more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he, the attorney, said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. We have many, many areas in the South Carolina Baptist Disaster Relief Association to serve. You do not have to be physically able to carry a chainsaw in one hand, climb up on the roof, walk out on a limb, and make sawdust. <laughs> there are many things. There are enough feeding units right now standing by to respond by the end of the week to Dorian, who's coming up the coast, to feed 300,000 meals a day. That is remarkable. It's all done by volunteers. This is where churches come in. This is where Christ's children come in. There are very few physical restrictions 
that will stop you from being a disaster relief volunteer. Every team that goes out has a team leader. A lot of us are getting up there in a few years. I think I'll be 40 next week. <laughs> I'm sick, almost 65. Right? There are things that we can do. God has brought us through things in our life, given us experiences. Our knowledge can be used as team leaders. They do not expect me. I mean, I want to. My pride says I can do it. They do not expect me to get on a ladder and climb up a tree and cut a tree off a house. Right? But they can use my knowledge. They can use your knowledge. And whether it be a chainsaw team, has everyone heard of mud out? When there's a flood or a hurricane or a tornado and the water comes up in the house, everything gets soaking wet. They call it mud out because most of the floods leave the house full of mud. Everything from two feet above the water line up, everything from that point down gets stripped out. It doesn't require a whole lot of skill, just a willingness to be there to serve, to get dirty, and I promise you, you will get dirtier than you can imagine. Wet insulation, wet carpet, a sofa that two men can pick up and carry in when it's new begins to weigh, a three-person sofa when it is wet will weigh between 1,400 and 1,600 pounds. These things get cut up with battery-powered saws, chainsaws even. Things are cut up and carried to the curb. What do you think the families are going through at a time when they're watching everything that they've worked for their life, the things that they have gathered, the things that mean so much to them. Family pictures, grandpa's pocket knife, grandma's apron that hung on the kitchen wall. They need chaplains. They need the love of Christ. Our primary mission when we go out is to bring that to them. Bring them the love of Christ. You can't get out of the truck, start up chainsaws, go to work and say, here, I got the plan of salvation. They don't care how much you know or what you have to offer them until they know how much you care. Every team has a chaplain. Their sole purpose, their focus is to be with the family, whether it be one representative there or the entire family. Be with him through the entire evolution. Our teams go out generally for one week at a time. Being inside the state, if it need be, you can make a two-day journey and bring yourself home, or you can make a three- or four-day journey. They will not restrict a volunteer on the amount of time that they can serve. If you can only serve one day, we're not going to tell you don't come. If you can serve one day, come. I promise you there will be a use for you. Besides the chainsaw team and the mud out team and the feeding teams, there are assessors. If anyone has experience in any type of carpentry, um, home building, any commercial construction industry, you can look at a house and tell, okay, this wall is going to have to be stripped out from this point down. Or you can stand at the road and count the trees that are on the houses Draw a little sketch picture and say, this tree is three feet in diameter. It needs to be removed. This tree is five feet in diameter. It needs to be removed. There's a picture of a team that went out a couple of months ago. The tree was 11 feet in diameter. The woman called in and said, I don't think this is an emergency because I can still drive under it. She had a full-size Dodge pickup truck parked under the tree when she took the picture. She said, the problem is, if I need an ambulance, the ambulance can't get back to me. That was a good day. <laughs> I wasn't there, but they had a lot of fun. It took them two days to clear her driveway. Okay. It is hard work. Your day will start off about 5, 36 o'clock in the morning with a morning devotion, a morning prayer, and praise and worship time. You'll be provided breakfast, and then you go to work. Lunch will be provided. Your evening meal will be provided. When you return, there is a shower and laundry facility that, that is close proximity to each team. You may not have your own private one there for your team, but there is one close to your team. You're going to take a good hot shower with linens that are provided by the shower laundry team. 
the washing machines, they do your laundry, wash it, fold it, wash it, dry it, fold it, and give it back to you in the same bag that you brought it to them in. You want to talk about an awesome ministry? How many ladies have ever washed clothes and folded them? <laughs> you, you get my point? And gentlemen, let me tell you something. Men can fold towels too. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head, brother? <laughs> right. There are many different avenues. The, the greatest mission is the mission of bringing Christ's love. And that's, that's the focus of what the South Carolina Baptist Disaster Relief is about. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 25, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all the nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep at his right hand and the goats on his left hand. And then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God knew you were going to be one of his sheep. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. And then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king of all kings shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. We are God's children. There is no greater love than the love that he has for us. Verse 41 says, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, the goats, Depart from me, ye cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick. And in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, saw we thee a hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of these, you did it not to me. And they shall go away into the everlasting punishment. But the righteous into eternal life. There are many, many that we pass sometimes daily. The man on the street corner with a cup begging for food. Or the lady with a sign that says, we'll work for food, need food. The neighbor that lives down the street, grass is two feet tall unable to get out and cut it herself or himself. There are many opportunities to minister to Jesus through touching the lives of his children. The people may not remember you. They not, may not remember the deed that you've done. They may not remember the words that you said. But they will remember how you made them feel. To have the feeling in your life to be in a situation where you cannot help yourself and have the love of Christ come into your life and be the help for you. That, that is one of the greatest feelings of all. I was in Past Christian, Mississippi a few days after Katrina came ashore and we had a tractor trailer load of food, water, bread, fresh bread. I, I'll tell you this, we had an agreement with Sunbeam. I would call them as we were leaving South Georgia, go through Jacksonville, Florida, Sunbeam factory, and they would load up a tractor trailer load of hot, fresh bread. That was a difficult moment. <laughs> we had to close the doors and get in the truck and drive off. 
fresh bread smells as good as grandma's biscuits. But we were we were in Pastor Christian, Mississippi. There were nothing a mile and a half to three miles from the shoreline to the railroad tracks and Highway 90. And there was nothing but concrete slabs. The trees that were big enough to still be standing had no limbs. And we were in an area that had been designated by FEMA as a feeding area. We tried to focus on the assisted living homes for the elderly and the apartment complexes. And we were in the back of this trailer passing out food and water and bread. Every bag that we gave out had a Bible in it. And there was a lady stood off to the side, elderly lady, and she wouldn't get in the line. She wouldn't come up. I asked her, you know, ma'am, come, we'd get you some food and water. I'd get one of the guys to help carry it back to your house for you. And she turned around and walked off. The next day, she was back. And I figured, big old ugly man talking to a little elderly lady. I told one of the ladies, I said, go talk to her. Before the lady got over there, she walked off. That afternoon, she came back. <clears throat> and I said, ma'am, can I get somebody to carry you some food and water to your house? Very bitter, as angry as she could sound. Why are you doing this? I said, because Jesus loves you. And she broke a little bit. Me and one of the guys carried some stuff, followed her back to her house. Third floor apartment. No elevator in the building, but there was no electricity. The elevator wouldn't have worked anyway. When we got up to her apartment, there were less than 10 or 15 square feet in one corner that still had a roof over it. The whole roof was gone. Wind is blown in. One of those sofas I was telling you about was sitting off on the side. She had piled everything that she had that was of personal value to her that she could move. She had it piled up in that corner under the roof. And she was sitting and sleeping on a wet sofa. The love of God came into her life through some disaster relief workers. That's the type of, that's the impact. You know, at a time when people's lives are destroyed, Everything they've worked for all their lives, everything that they've held near and dear to them, they see it going away, and they, they feel totally helpless. There's nothing they can do about it. If someone had a home, how could they possibly get that tree off of the roof when they can barely get out of the car and, and get to the house? These are the type of situations you'll go into. Stay prayed up and stay prepared because you will see things that will impact your heart and your life forever. But God is our strength and our refuge. He'll give us what we need to get through this. A while ago in the story of the Good Samaritan, where this Samaritan stepped up, cared for the man, as he was leaving, he made a donation, basically, to the innkeeper to continue that care. If you feel that you can't go, some of us have responsibilities some of us just can't go. If you feel you can't go, every penny that you can donate to the disaster relief or to the missions in your church, our tithing goes to God, to our church, and then these type of things are special offerings. I'm not asking or, or trying to talk you into giving up your tithing. These type of things are special offerings. And I assure you that it is a... Christian ministry that is handled for no other purpose than to spread the love of God. This is in the book of James in chapter 5 and verse 12. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. <clears throat> who art thou that judgest another? Go now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there for a year. And we will buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanish away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, 
we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The Holy Spirit is, is the great convictor. He'll tell us when we've done right or done wrong. God is true and faithful to forgive. If you drive past that man that's sitting on the side of the road needing food, the Holy Spirit brings you conviction. Pull into one of these fast food stores and buy a Happy Meal or something and go back and give it to him. God is not the author of confusion. Don't make a U-turn in the middle of an eight-lane intersection. <laughs> the meal will mean so much to a man who's truly hungry. But more importantly to him is the fact that someone cared enough, someone loved him enough, someone was obedient enough to God to do that thing for him. There is no act that is too small. There is no kindness that is too small. When I was 14 years old, I was in an airplane with my father. I was in the pilot seat flying. My sister and my cousin were in the back seat. My dad stopped me before we took off. He said, son, you stay here. Let me take the girls for a treat. He had a heart attack and they died. I began to ask, why, Lord? If I'd have stayed in the plane, I might have saved him. I might have been able to fly. I might have been able to do this. I might have been able to do that. Why, Lord, why? I was 14 years old. My dad was almost my size now. I mean, he wasn't quite as big as I am now, but he was a big man. Would I have perished also? I don't know. But I do know this. After I gave my life to Christ, I was in Waycross, Georgia, to try out to sing for a traveling gospel group. The plan was for me to come up after intermission and sing a song by myself and then sing a couple songs with them. As we were getting ready to start, there was a lady sitting in a pew behind me and two church ladies were ministering to her. And please don't be offended. There's no peace, no nice way to say this. This was a lady of the night. She was dressed very poorly. She was very dirty. And she was telling stories of not only selling herself, but her children to strangers for money for drugs. And she made a comment, there is no way that God can forgive me for the things that I do. There's no way God can love me. The man that was singing and leading the group stopped halfway through this, their first song. He stopped. He said, Brother, I don't know what this is about, but you need to come and sing. I said, okay. I went up there, grabbed the microphone, they plugged my tape in. The verse in the song went like this. Held a prisoner by my sin, the battle's raging deep went in, searching everywhere to find no peace and comfort for my mind. But when everything had failed, the love of Christ did prevail. This lady went on her knees, gave her life to Christ right there. And just as plain as I am speaking to you right now, God spoke to me and answered a question I had been asking for 30 years. Three words, this is why. God put me out of that airplane because had I been in there, I might have got killed. And he needed to use me, wanted to use me to save this lady's soul. No act you do is too small. Don't never doubt that the things you do here on this earth are unnoticed in heaven. Our God is a big God. He is a powerful God. He is an all-loving, all-consuming God. And he will fulfill every need. He won't make you do anything, but he will strengthen you if you're obedient to the Holy Spirit moving in your, your life.
Are there any veterans in the house today? Would you please stand, gentlemen, ladies? And ladies. And ladies. <laughs> Give them a hand. We can sit in this house of God's worship and we can speak the name of Jesus Christ because of their sacrifices to, to lift up the name of Christ and to spread his love. Our generation is truly blessed. They talk about all that we've done. I say that all that we've done was built on the foundation that you got the older folks laid. The roads weren't cleared by bulldozers back then. They were cleared by horse and, and a double bit axe. A little bit harder job. The power poles weren't put up by bucket trucks. They were put up by a couple men and a mule. When you flip a light switch, it's because these guys worked. Thank you. They built our lives on a firm foundation. This is a Christian nation. One nation under God. And that is the, the rock. Amen, brother. The solid rock. Go ahead, man. Dreamed I went to heaven. You were there with me. We walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing. Someone called your name. We turned and saw a young man. He was smiling as he came. He said, friend, you may not know me now and then he said but wait you used to teach my sunday school when i was only eight every week you said a prayer before the class would start one day as you said that prayer i asked jesus in my heart Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Then another man stood before you and said, remember the time a missionary came to your church. His pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave. That's why I'm here today. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. One by one they came, far as the eye could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosities. The little gifts that you had gave, the sacrifices made. I notice here on earth, in heaven now proclaim. I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry 
I am all so sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord. He said, my child, look around you. Great is your reward. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Thank Giving to the Lord, I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. So glad you gave. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. We just love you and praise you. We ask, Lord, your mighty hand of protection be around every family as they travel throughout the day. Let us be prayed up and prepared for the storm that comes, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory. Amen. that we all as a, as a church family have been have been touched in some way by this this presentation and I, I know I have been and I just say to the glory of God may he continue to bless your ministries both your your musical group which I am determined now to to experience sometime in the near future and to your efforts with the uh, with disaster relief and if you would if you join me in, in a closing prayer, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we your your church family comes together with hearts in unison to to thank you for this opportunity and to thank you for the for the the opportunity to serve in in the many different ways that are available to serve. And we just pray that we would leave this place asking for a, a double portion of your grace, your mercy, and your love as we go out to share the love of Jesus with the hurting and dying world especially father as the storms approach we 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 know that your grace and your mercy are sufficient and in all things no matter what the outcome we'll be careful to give your name the praise for it's in jesus name we ask amen Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship.
Your 